Chinese green tea farm how it's made great big story leaves. I grew up in a tea farm about 20 miles from Taimu Mountain in eastern Fujian province of China. Fujian is one of the major tea growing regions in China. The famous oolong tea iron goddess, aka Tai Quan Yin, is from southern Fujian. Taimu Mountain is the origin of the exotic white tea. I spent most of my early childhood in a tea farm with my parents and three brothers and a sister along many other families and their playful kids. The farm is very large with two separate locations on two different mountains several miles apart. Aside tea growing and processing, the farm also grew crops and raised boars. The farm was state-owned. The majority of the workers were young single men and women. Some of them just graduated from high schools. This is during the time of cultural revolution when every graduate was sent to a remote farm to learn from the physical work. For most kids, there was no chance to go to college at that time. We all lived in the same apartment building and shared a big dining hall. It was like a big family. As a kid, I went to the tea garden with my mother and other women to pluck the tea leaves during the day. My father who was the accountant inspected and weighed the leaves at the workshop. The women were paid according to the weight of the leaves they plucked. Night time was when the tea processing began. The farm mostly produced green teas. The processing involved the drying of tea leaves by firing and frying. The process was continued overnight. The workers took a break in the midnight and had snacks, typically a bowl of kanji or noodle. I along with other kids would stay late until it was snack time so that we got our share. It is not because we helped in any way, it was just because we were kids. Sometimes, we even slept in the workshop. We would take a large linen bag used for storing tea leaves and used it as a sleeping bag. One night, my cousin tied my older brother's bag while he was sleeping sound. Later on, my brother woke up and tried to go to bathroom and could not get out. Unfortunately, he wet himself. After tea leaves were processed, some of them became broken. The broken pieces need to be separated out form the whole leaves by hands. I would join my mother and other women in this effort. Picking out the smaller broken pieces was a painstaking manual process and required a great deal of eyes and hands coordination. The faster one could pick, the more she would handle and the more she would get paid. The outcome was inspected to make sure the tea is free of broken pieces. Our farm was not a tea refinery where teas are further processed and packaged for final distribution to stores. The coarse teas were transported by feet from the farm to a refinery in the town many miles away. This was the time when we got to go with to visit the town and get our haircuts, get good snacks and buy industrial products made in big and famous cities like Shanghai. I moved to my hometown about 30 miles away to live with my grandparents and to attend school when I was about 8 years old. Since then, I only visited the farm during the summer break. Chinese people recognize tea as one of the seven necessities of living. Every family, poor or rich, one person or several generations under the roof, all have tea and use it as a way of receiving and entertaining guests. It is a custom that you greet a guest with a bowl of hot tea. Most of time some homemade snacks are also served along with the tea. There was no soda, no ice cream when I was a kid. Only tea and the courteous receptions I got from other families as I visited them. Those moments are in my sweet memories and are very much missed as I now live a modern life in the industrialized society full of all kinds of gadgets and gizmos along with the fast and convenient sodas and ice creams, thousands of miles away from where I am from.